Good morning, my name is Silvia Vivarelli and uh, I'm working uh, in uh, CINEA in the Life, Energy and Climate Unit. Uh, I would like to uh, introduce to you uh, how to prepare an excellent proposal for uh, our call um, for the Life, uh, Clean Energy Transition part. Um, first of all, uh, 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 why we you need to prepare an excellent proposal because uh, it's quite a tough competition uh, i'm presenting here to you the outcomes of the previous call for proposal that we had in 2020 uh, at that time uh, it was the horizon 2020 energy efficiency call and uh, we received uh, 352 proposal and out of those only 42 uh, were retained as a project were supported that means a success rate of uh, around 12 percent so only the very excellent proposal uh, uh, can uh, succeed uh, if, as a project um what uh, uh, what uh, is an excellent proposal for us? Of course, first of all, uh, the proposal uh, has to support the mission of the program. Uh, LifeSet uh, uh, is uh, um, supporting uh, uh, coordination and support actions, so kind of market uptake uh, action uh, for uh, the transition to renewable energy and energy efficiency. Uh, so um, this uh, the, the proposal, of course, have to uh, uh, um, support uh, that transition uh, and they what, what they mainly need to do is to uh, facilitate uh, policy implementation uh, this uh, also by uh, uh, supporting uh, uh, in itself the development uh, of policies or uh, the implementation of current one on the ground uh, but also much more uh, let's say concrete action on the ground uh, such as uh, mobilizing investments or uh, building the capacity of the stakeholders uh, and as well uh, um, and, and this of course with the aim to accelerate uh, the clean energy transition uh, this of course is not new uh, because uh, uh, we have been supporting similar action before uh, under the intelligent energy europe program until 2013 and then from 2014 it was under uh, the horizon europe program as i mentioned before uh, the energy efficiency course and uh, uh, under Horizon Europe, we have supported more than 380 projects. Some of them um, are still uh, running, will be still running for a few years. And uh, uh, the kind of uh, action we'll be supporting uh, uh, is uh, similar to the market uptake part of those uh, uh, projects supported under Horizon 2020. So over there, by looking at what was previously supported, you could see what kind of of action we need uh, as well for the clean energy transition. Then you will have uh, under the specific call we will launch every year, you will have uh, the specific uh, call topics or priorities that we will be supported for a given year. Uh, five things I would like to show you that you would need to remember from the whole evaluation process. So uh, the first one is the process in itself, because you will see that uh, from the call deadline, that is uh, what you see here as month zero, so call deadline until uh, what we need uh, uh, the, the grant agreement signature. So uh, the time to grant for the successful proposal is nine months. That means maximum. That means that uh, uh, the action you are going to propose will at the earliest uh, start uh, in uh, uh, the next autumn, so in 2022, not uh, not uh, not before. So uh, meaning that uh, um, that you have to think this into account when preparing a proposal. So the action you are proposing will be starting in a bit of time. So it has to be fitting into uh, uh, and relevant for that period at the same time uh, that you, you need to remember that uh, all what you uh, need to know uh, for the call is uh, under the fu uh, uh, funding and tender portal so um, uh, is a portal uh, the ones that uh, uh, are used to horizon 2020 would recognize the portal um, 
And uh, over there, you will find once the call is published, all the relevant documents, all the templates. But there also there is also a section I would a section I would like to highlight you that uh, the, is the frequently asked questions section. Uh, be, and uh, I strongly advise you to uh, to have a look to this session because uh, when uh, you uh, you will. Uh, prepare a proposal in that session you will have more information on uh, or clarification let's say on the text that a specific call topic has and we update also this section when once we receive uh, questions from uh, external people uh, asking clarification on the text and then uh, uh, in, uh, afterward we will uh, update the frequently asked question with the reply we had given to a specific uh, 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 applicants so uh, so that uh, all the applicants can have access to the same information before submitting so i advise you to look at this as well uh, here i'm not going in detail on the structure of the proposal because uh, this will uh, be very detailed in the call documents but just to give you a flavor it will be uh, with mainly two parts a and b so part a is the administrative forms part b is more the technical description that is mirroring the four uh, assessment criteria evaluation criteria that are relevant impact implementation and resources and then you have a part c with some additional project data such as uh, the key performance indicators and some annexes for other documents Comments you might need to upload in the system. Uh, while I would like to uh, spend a bit more time on this uh, slide, because uh, of course you can write an excellent proposal, but you need to be sure that then is assessed. And to be assessed, it has to pass the admissibility and the eligibility check. So uh, this, uh, this uh, is, is really, you have really to, to be careful that you comply with admissibility and eligibility rules. So admissibility clearly it has to be submitted by the deadline and on the portal. Only on this funding and tenders portal can be submitted. It has to be complete. So all the forms or the parts that uh, I already already also briefly mentioned in the previous slide, uh, will need to be completed as requested in the call template. And you will need to use the template that, that are given. You cannot use uh, other templates. Uh, then uh, uh, we, uh, it, to be admissible, it has to be readable. That in our uh, meaning, it has with a font uh, no smaller than Arial 9. And we need to be able to print it as an A4. Then there is what is very important that you consider is the maximum number of pages. So, and uh, uh, here I think a clarification uh, would be uh, as well needed because uh, this maximum 70 pages uh, includes also the instruction, meaning that we, when you will have the template, you will see that there are instructions. And you should leave the instruction, not delete them. And uh, with the instruction included, the maximum number of pages is 70 for us, for life, uh, clean energy transition transition soon program. Uh, and this you really need to keep in mind because all the uh, pages exceeding the 70 are not taken into account in the assessment. So already in the past, we have seen proposal that didn't pass a, a threshold for a score in a specific criterion, for example, just because uh, part of the information needed for the assessment were in the pages that were uh, uh, over exceeding this the page limitation and uh, uh, and this you really need to be careful on this and then uh, there are eligibility criteria that are also detailed in the call documents uh, and they relate more to the uh, uh, consortium composition so for most of the topic for example not for all of them but for most of them we have uh, the minimum requirement of uh, three uh, eligible participant from three different uh, countries uh, and then uh, over there uh, in the eligibility section you have also uh, uh, the, the clarification of which countries could be which kind of participant which kind of activities can be eligible and uh, please read carefully those instructions before preparing your proposal uh, and of course what uh, is super important for the <laughs> evaluation is that you somehow uh, uh, know very well uh, how to uh, comply with the different uh, evaluation criteria and you uh, clearly uh, describe in your proposal what is requested so that uh, you, you can be assessed, that your proposal can be assessed uh, uh, with a good score for all these four criteria, relevance, impact, quality and resources. 
But what is somehow the, the, the very, the, I would say not the most important, but maybe yes for us is the, somehow the, the impact of your proposal that you need really uh, to uh, carefully um, assess uh, uh, and include in your proposal. Uh, so, uh, uh, of course, it, for us, it's important to see that uh, impact uh, are not just figures that you have put trying to guess uh, in, in the proposal just to comply with the template. But uh, what uh, we want to see, but meaning that the expert that will assess and instructed to look at is to see that uh, you have a clear, uh, clear intervention logic of the action you are proposing. So, first of all, uh, uh, that you, it's clear for you what are the needs the needs, uh, so the objectives uh, resulting from the needs that you know how to achieve those objectives, so which kind of uh, uh, resources, activities, you need to have uh, for achieving them. And then uh, uh, this will uh, result in outputs, which in turn will result in the impact. And of, of course, uh, you have two level of uh, impact. So the short term impact, so the one that you will achieve during the project duration and the longer term impact after the project duration. As well, you will have uh, two kind of uh, different uh, indicators. So the program related indicators, meaning that all the call topic will be somehow are asked to have uh, some common indicators that are uh, energy savings and renewable energy triggered, as well as investment in sustainable energy triggered. Uh, and then there will be the cold topic specific indicators. So for example, for a building renovation related topic, uh, one indicator could be the reduction of time for the renovation works compared to usual practices. Um, so we really strongly advise you to spend time in uh, identifying the impacts of your project. Uh, and then uh, I would like to conclude with a few tips. So the first one is quite logical. So uh, you need to start as soon as possible to, to, uh, to prepare your proposal. Uh, of course, you will need uh, uh, to have the information that uh, uh, that will be made available for uh, at the call opening. But uh, I think uh, uh, you have already kind of idea of what could be, uh, let's say, uh, already in uh, in the call by uh, by listening as well uh, to the, the presentation of the clean energy transition part of this uh, info day as well and and then um, uh, and then you can really uh, start uh, uh, you can really start uh, preparing the proposal uh, then um, uh, you need to read all the relevant information. So uh, there are, uh, of course, the call for proposal and everything, as I said, is in the funding and tender portal. Uh, so over there, you have all the information. Uh, and then once you see that the idea you have in mind is fitting, really fitting into a call topic for this year call, then you should uh, really clearly show that uh, you, you have uh, a bit of, like I ju was just explaining now for the impact, that you have clear the objectives uh, and how to achieve them, which stakeholders, uh, uh, which target groups to engage in the project and this, and you have really a good, a good connection uh, to achieve them uh, and to involve them in the project. And then, uh, uh, as I said, the impact. So uh, what will make the difference through your project, which is uh, really crucial for us. Uh, the last, the, the other thing that is uh, really uh, uh, of uh, crucial importance is that you have uh, a good consortium. I would say even excellent consortium because uh, if you uh, have been coordinator or if you have worked in a consortium or if you would uh, ask her to a coordinator, they would tell you, I mean, la uh, that the project was successful uh, because uh, the consortium was great. So the consortium is really of uh, fundamental importance. So meaning that uh, should not be artificially built uh, just to, for example, you say, okay, uh, we need to uh, have a new wide consortium and we try to uh, have um, 
many partners from different countries. No, this is not the way we want to see a proposal built, but we want to, once you have clear which action you want to propose, what is the geographical coverage that would be the meaningful one, the, the relevant one for the action you are proposing. And then uh, uh, you look for the partners uh, to put together a consortium and you try to have the partner that have the complementary skills and expertise to really implement successfully the action. This should be the way. As well as for the budget, uh, we don't to want to see an artificially built uh, top-down budget. It has to be built bottom-up, meaning that most of the budget in our kind of proposal, since we don't support infrastructure, is uh, staff related, uh, staff cost related. Uh, meaning that uh, then to see this bottom-up, uh, you have, of course, once you have identified all the uh, tasks that have to be um, that have to be performed, uh, then uh, of course you know you you should know you should estimate the effort needed to accomplish those tasks. Once you have the what we call person months, so the effort needed, then uh, you, of course you allocate uh, this uh, task to the relevant partners. And then uh, at that point, you will have the resulting budget uh, needed. This is the way to, uh, to build a uh, bottom-up uh, budget. Uh, then at this point, you are ready to write your proposal. Uh, so uh, again, you think uh, uh, think uh, uh, about uh, the, the how to better um, better have a methodology that works uh, for for what you are proposing. Uh, the, so the best methodology, the working steps, uh, uh, and the impact, as I said, and all the the different things uh, uh, I presented before. But an additional thing that I didn't mention yet is about the importance that for us as well as communication and dissemination, because uh, uh, as, I, as I said, the, the impact is very important for us. And the impact is uh, uh, getting bigger, of course, if others, not just the ones involved in the project, but also other beneficiaries, other stakeholders will implement uh, a similar action inspired by your project. That's why it's so important that you disseminated the results of your project to other stakeholders. And so we look carefully at this as well. Uh, then uh, the final polishing is uh, like, uh, of course, uh, once you have uh, uh, drafted everything, uh, it's better that someone else as well uh, that has not been involved from the beginning have a look, a critical view on what, uh, what uh, you have uh, drafted, uh, specifically a native English speaker uh, would help uh, uh, to have maybe a, a better, uh, more uh, easily readable uh, proposal. And this, of course, uh, helps as well. Um, the last thing I wanted to say is that uh, uh, if you need more information apart from uh, this info day and uh, maybe future ones, but uh, uh, to register to the CINEA Clean Energy Newsletter, uh, if you if not already registered, because over there we uh, give uh, regularly updates, both on what happens with the calls and so on, but also uh, with success story from our project that uh, could inspire you as well. As well, we have uh, some portals like Build Up Manage Energy that you could consult. And uh, of course, as I mentioned before, uh, this program is built on the experience of many other projects. So uh, before uh, uh, you propose something, look at what has already been done in the, in, in the area you are going to work uh, under the Horizon 2020 CORDIS portal. Uh, thank you very much for everything, for listening to to us uh, and uh, we wish you good luck uh, for the future preparation of the proposal. Thank you.